Hello and welcome back to Storytime with Mrs. Howergy. I'm Mrs. Howergy. Today we will continue the book, Amelia Writes Again. <coughs> the worst part was Mrs. Rooney's classroom. She had brought her own comfy armchair to school, her own books, her own light-up globe, all that stuff was ruined. I saw her sitting in her blackened chair with the sunflowers on it. She was crying, but not making a sound. It made me feel awful to see her. I wrote Nadia a long letter about the fire, and I'm writing about it here in my notebook, too. But I still can't get it out of my head. Sometimes getting things outside of me and onto paper helps. Not this time. I keep seeing Mrs. Rooney with the tears running down her cheeks. At least Leah's not mad at me anymore. Or maybe she's forgotten about my notebook. No one can think of anything but the fire. Even Cleo has been nice, but the yellow tape is still up. I won't feel better until it's gone. Yesterday, the workers started to rebuild the school, and I got a great idea. I told Mr. Noodle, and he told Miss Bell, and she thinks my idea is great, too. They said yes, so this is what we get to do. When the workers pour new cement for the new pavement in front of the new classrooms, each kid is supposed to bring a treasure from home, like a plastic dinosaur, a button, a seashell, anything. And we each get to put our treasure in the wet cement and write our initials next to it. It was great. I put in a marker because I like to draw and write so much. It was out of ink anyway. Leah put in a charm from her charm bracelet. One first grader put in a tooth he just lost. He said he still got money from the tooth fairy. The last person to put something in was Miss Rooney. She put in a good luck penny to bring the school and all of us good luck. And for the first time since the fire, I saw Miss Rooney smile. I wrote Nadia about my idea, and I drew her great picture of our new sidewalk. She wrote me back right away. Things are beginning to feel normal again at school, and they caught the arsonist creep. It was some man who wanted to protest against our government. I can't figure out how burning down a school sends a message to the government. Couldn't he just send a letter, or if he was really in a hurry, a fax? I'm so happy everything is all taken care of. The arsonist, still a creepular, creepus creep, and the school. Now I don't have to worry anymore. Now I can think about writing stories again. If I can think of any, maybe when I have a story, if it's a good one, I can show my notebook to Leah. I have an idea already. A good luck story. A girl found a shiny new penny on the sidewalk. She picked it up for good luck and named it Patty, so she could call it Pretty Patty Penny, or PPP for short. She put Patty in her pocket, but she didn't know her pocket had a hole in it. The penny fell out, and with it, all of her good luck. Bad things started to happen to the girl. She dropped her books in a puddle. She punched the tetherball, and it hit her in the face. Well, it hit her on the head. Ouch! She sat on her chocolate donut at lunchtime. Pretty Patty Penny wasn't having much luck either. A seagull tried to eat her, but spit her out. A dog lifted its leg over her, but she rolled away just in time. Then a lady in a pointy high heel stepped on her. Could things get any worse? PPP needed the girl to find her and pick her up. The girl needed PPP and her good luck. Would they ever find each other again? On the way home from school, the girl's shoelace came untied. More bad luck, she thought. But when she bent down to tie it, what did she see? A penny. Not just any penny, it was Pretty Patty Penny. This time she put Patty in her other pocket with no hole in it. She ran all the way home and put Patty in her piggy bank. She never had bad luck again, and neither did Pretty Patty Penny. Leah just passed me a note. It said, what are you writing about? When can I see your notebook? I'll show you mine. P.S. Mine is full of secrets. I just don't know if I should show her. It's hard to decide. Some things should just be for yourself, but some are okay to share with your best friend. Some things are even better when you share them, like Space World. Maybe I should just show her already, especially if she shows me hers. I have an idea. When I was nine, I only wrote stories by myself. Now I'm ten, so it's time for a change. I'll write a story with Leah in my notebook. Leah, can you see what's in my notebook by writing in it yourself? Let's do a story together here. 
Amelia, great idea. Here's the first sentence of our story. There once was a boy named Nick who had a terrible secret. He wrote about his secrets in the notebook. His best friend, George, begged and begged to read the notebook. Finally, Nick said, okay, here. But he was afraid of what George would think of his secrets. George was glad that Nick trusted him with the secrets. He didn't think it was, a ter it was terrible at all. Nick felt better having someone else know his secrets and still like him. The secret was that Nick had a tail. And that's the end of this tale. I like the story Leah and I wrote together. So does she. And now she knows the kind of things I write in here. Maybe I'll show her the rest someday. I guess she felt left out when I wouldn't show her anything. I didn't mean to leave her out. She is my best friend after all. But I still worry that if she read what I wrote about numbers and hands, she might think I'm weird. I wonder what Leah thinks about and what she writes in her notebook. Now I'm sure that things are okay between us because Leah saw me staring at her. She asked, what are you staring at? Do I have something on my face? Yes, I said. And she started wiping her nose and mouth. Yes, I said, your nose, your nose is on your face. And I showed her the picture I drew of her. She laughed. She's a good friend. All right, maybe I'll show her my next notebook. Thank you so much for joining me. Please like this video and subscribe below. Bye-bye.